Greetings, this is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSD. This video will point out and describe the new name value pair options in the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 ADS underscore response dot properties file. Using this video and the ADS documentation will allow for correct input into the file and to perform a successful installation using the unattended mode. This video you are viewing will walk us through the ADS underscore response dot properties file and explain the general contents and use of the file in the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 unattended installation process. Some of the name value pair entries apply to new installs while others are for upgrades including installing a second ADS component at a later time. Options are provided if the recommended server minimums are not met and choices to overcome that deficiency. There are various sections to the file this video will focus on. Those areas will be the ones that are new to Via Diagnostic Server 2.0. I have logged into a server where I've expanded out the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 install image and have went into that directory. We will shortly be looking at the file listed at the top of the screen. The four highlighted subdirectories are where the actual application files, the cell models, and the environmental scripts are stored. The first of those subdirectories listed is ENVCHECK, where the scripts are that will validate the current environment that is on the server. The next directory is models, where the set of current cell models at the time the installer was compiled is stored. The directory being where the cell image is stored is highlighted next. And finally, the last directory being where the SLA mon image for install is stored. The first thing we need to do is to open the ADS response.properties file in an editor that you are comfortable using. I am opening the file using the default VI editor on this Linux system. We are now in the editor and you can edit the file. The first section asks if the end user license agreement is accepted. It is defaulted to a Y as it needs to be accepted to perform the install. The next section is used when this is a brand new install. The choices are to install the SAL Gateway 2.3, SLA Mon 2.3, or both components. The default is to install both. You can select a value of a 1 or a 2 to install one component or the other. If the installer has determined that an ADS 2.0 component is currently installed, the highlighted section is used to add the other component. Be sure the values are set appropriately. This section is displaying the various name value pairs for a variety of upgrade scenarios, depending upon what the environment check has determined exists on the system. The first option asks whether to upgrade SAL to version 2.3 only or to upgrade SAL and install SLA Mon 2.3. The second option is when SAL 2.2 from ADS 1.0 is installed and the choices are to just upgrade to SAL 2.3 or to upgrade SAL and install SLA Mon 2.3. This is similar to the previous screen. The third option is used if the installer has determined ADS 1.0 SLA Monitor component is installed and the choices are to upgrade to SLA Monitor 2.3 or to upgrade SLA Mon and install SAL 2.3. The last choice in that section is to upgrade both components to ADS 2.0 as the installer has determined both of the ADS 1.0 components were installed. The next section is to determine if the server has appropriate RAM and hard disk capacity depending upon the combination of SAL and or SLA Mon being installed. Generally speaking, these conditions may not be met on a server upgrade as the components together require larger amounts of resources than the earlier releases. The paragraph highlighted details one of the primary uses which is to have the ability to perform an upgrade and then take a backup to be applied to a new server or virtual machine instance in the form of a migration. It is very important to understand what you currently have existing in terms of RAM, processor, and hard drive space. 
and its allocation on the server, plus to know what Avaya components are currently installed to accurately answer the options below. Refer to the documentation to identify the recommended and required minimums. The four choices in this section determine what to do when the hardware minimums are not met. Evaluate the choices closely. The first item is if ADS 1.0 components are installed. The second item is if ADS 1.0 version of SAL is installed. The third item is if ADS 1.0 version of SLA monitor is installed. And the fourth option is if version 2.x of a SAL gateway is installed. That could be 2.1, 2.2 or 2.0. In this section, the six choices determine what to do when the RAM and hard drive hardware minimums are not met. This provides a little bit more granularity. The first item is if RAM for SLA MON is not met. The second item is if hard drive space for SLA MON is not met. The third item is if the hard drive for SAL is not met. The fourth item is if RAM for SAL is not met. The fifth item is if both components are to be installed and the hard drive is not sufficient. The sixth item is if both components are to be installed and the RAM is not sufficient. The next section is to define the SLA MON parameters. The first is to import the SLA MON public key into the RPM database. The defaults should be accepted. The second is to determine if the WebLM server should be installed locally. If it is installed locally, the WebLM local value would be retained as a Y. The next value shown is the IP address of the remote WebLM server if that option is chosen by setting the previous value to an N. An address must be entered to connect to the remote WebLM server. The last two variables set up the firewall and syslog function, and they should be retained as a Y. The balance of the file that follows contains all of the SAL gateway parameters. Many of the defaults that you are acquainted with are already populated. I will be focusing mainly on the new required elements. The first section that is new is a choice to install the automatic software update function, which has a choice of on or off. The default value in the file is SELECT. A positive entry of ON or OFF must be made to address the install requirement of the application. The next section is to define the SNTP server, server port, and SAL administrator email address. These three entries are mandatory for sending status messages such as service pack is downloaded and ready for install, or an automatic update has been completed successfully. The SMTP username, SMT underscore password are included if an SMTP server needs authentication. The last value, the SMTP underscore secondary underscore email is there to provide a secondary destination to send status emails to if required. The next section of the properties file is defining the gateway.solution.elementID and the spirit.alarm ID. These IDs define the specific identity of this cell gateway to the Avaya data center. These values are not mandatory to be entered at this point as a system will install with the defaults listed. However, enabling the gateway is much easier in the overall process. Please note, to acquire the correct values, the pre-registration process would have to be followed prior to the Avaya Diagnostic Server install. The first two highlighted areas in this section are the SAL Gateway defaults and generally not needed to be touched. Refer to the SAL Admin documentation if your situation warrants modification. The last section in yellow is to be used if your network environment needs an internet proxy server and if authentication to that proxy server is required. The last area is a SAL model acquisition procedure. There are two choices, online after the SAL gateway has communicated with the Avaya data center or to use the models.zip package that comes as part of the install package. Note the pound signs 
in front of the online method and the gateway underscore trust host name value pairs. Those would have to be removed to get the models upon successful connection to the Avaya Data Center. And the name value pair called model underscore radio underscore selection equal offline would have to have a pound sign placed in front of it as only one of those two options can be active. The last thing highlighted is the path to the models.zip file that will be used if the offline method is chosen. The models.zip file is in the directory I pointed out at the beginning of this video. In the final section, the first two entries define if a policy server is to be implemented with its network identity and the SMP subagent setup if it needs to be changed. The last two fields in yellow generally should not be touched. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.